long should you fast? When you're doing intermittent fasting and you want some of the benefits of the prolonged fasts, like uh, autophagy. So let's start and see what we mean by autophagy. So autophagy is when your cells adapt and respond to stress. And so, for instance, when there are no nutrients around, they will start to use parts of themselves as nutrients. So they will take parts of the cell organelles, for instance, mitochondria that are not working well, or other things. And here you have a wide variety of things. So they might start breaking down foreign viruses for food, or bacteria, or um, start breaking down protein aggregates that are really not helpful. Some of them may actually be quite damaging and leading to uh, degenerative diseases in the long run. So it's a very positive process to have happen on a regular basis in your body. So basically autophagy is eating yourself, eating parts of you to gain energy. And as you break down these parts, you can actually also use some of the amino acids, for instance, to build other things, although most will be used for uh, energy. So autophagy is good for you because it will take care of all of the junk that might be stuck in your body that you don't really need and might be causing disease in the end. And it will be getting rid of the inefficient parts of your body so that you get new parts that are much more efficient and work better. So, this is actually essential for a number of things, including osteoarthritis. So in osteoarthritis, it's actually thought to be a chondroprotective mechanism because the cartilage needs autophagy. And uh, when that uh, starts to become smaller or not as efficient, uh, osteoarthritis sets in. Well, autophagy is initiated through stress of some sort. Fasting is definitely a type of stress because you're not getting the nutrients to the cells in the same way. So your whole metabolism actually changes. But there's a number of other ways that can induce um, autophagy on different levels. And one form is actually exercise. That will lead to autophagy as well because it's a type of stress. Uh, heat and cold shocks also same thing so if you're taking uh, hot really hot uh, baths or uh, sauna visits where you sweat a lot and it's really really hot or you're taking hot and cold showers so you're alternating between really hot for maybe 20 seconds and then really cold for uh, 30 seconds um, those kinds of things will also put your body into stress and that will also induce um, a lot of these positive mechanisms and autophagy is one of them. But you also can get autophagy induced through certain substances or compounds that you eat, actually. Some of them you might know. Uh, curcumin, for instance, you know, turmeric the active part of uh, turmeric uh, that has been um, used for a lot of different things actually also induces autophagy. Um, there's another substance, uh, spermidine. Uh, it's actually found in natto. Remember? Uh, I had some videos on natto, how to make natto and the many benefits of natto. So another benefit is that it actually induces autophagy. Uh, for those who like durian, durian also has spermidine and that also induces autophagy. Resveratrol that you find in um, ripe, some ripe fruits like grapes for instance, when, when they ripen, resveratrol is produced to protect them and uh, that is also uh, inducing autophagy. So 
one might wonder if you eat some of these compounds and are not fasting, will that still induce autophagy to some extent? And uh, the answer is very likely because uh, there are some studies in mice that show that when you feed them uh, spermidine, I think the, the studies were on spermidine, if not hydroxycitrate, then they do indeed go into autophagy. But fasting is a surefire way to initiate autophagy. However, how long does it take before you go into autophagy when you're fasting? Now, I don't know of an answer to that because I don't know of any human studies that show that. Um, there are studies in mice, but mice have a very different metabolism, a very different speed. So just after two days of fasting, a mouse will have lost one-fifth of its body mass, whereas you might only use, uh, lose uh, maybe one or two percent of your body mass and they lose 20 after two days. So it's, it's very different in that sense. So I don't know. But I know of some things that tend to trigger autophagy, and that is lack of nutrients, right? Uh, so um, we know that when the glycogen levels are very low, this starts to happen. When the insulin levels are low, because glucagon goes up at that time. And so, because insulin is so much easier to, um, to measure uh, in people, we can go off of that. And when you look at studies in people, you see that the main significant drop in insulin happens between 16 to 24 hours of fasting, right? So, uh, if you fast only 16 hours, then you will be at the limit of your, usually, you know, depends on what you've eaten and if you've been exercising or not. The more you exercise, the more of the glycogen deposits you will use up. But somewhere around 16 hours, your glycogen may be running low and your insulin will also drop significantly. So if you want the benefit of autophagy, you need to go more than 16 hours of fasting. So that would mean um, maybe going um, 18 to 20 hours or so, uh, which is a longer fast. And so that leaves a much smaller window for eating. So if you do a 20 hour fast, that leaves you just four hours for eating. Now if you decide to go on something like that, a diet where you, it's not a diet, but it's a time-restricted feeding schedule where you only eat during four hours, then you really should check if you're getting all the nutrients. You know, use chronometer or any other online, free online tool, nutrition tool, where you can log your food so it's like a food diary that ends up showing you all of the nutrients. And if you find out that you're constantly low, chronically low on some things, then check that out. Check if that is a problem for you. Sometimes it might not be a problem. See, for instance, if you're, uh, if you're vegan and uh, you're constantly low in calcium, but then you go and check, and the recommended daily uh, amount of calcium is uh, 1,000 micrograms, then, well, you might not actually need 1,000 micrograms if you're on a vegan diet, whereas you would if you're on a standard American-type diet. And so, so then maybe that's not even a problem because you're actually getting enough. Or if you're a, a carnivore, and you just eat meat. There are actually people like that who only eat meat. 
Well, they might not need as much vitamin C as someone who eats carbs. So maybe they're not really low in vitamin C,、uh, even though they're eating much less of it. So you would have to check depending on your diet. But I strongly advise you to do that to check if you're getting all the nutrients you need. When you're restricting your eating window that much, because you will probably eat a little bit less, and you have to make sure that you're not chronically low in anything. You might feel better during a couple of days, or、um, if you're doing this for a month. But if if you want to extend this into a lifestyle pat- a pattern, then、um, you really have to check that. So. How long should you fast? I would say 18 to 20 hours every day, and then do some、um, longer fasts.、Uh, you will want the three to four day fast still, because those will definitely trigger、um, macro autophagy in your body, and they will actually. Reset your whole immune system, and so this is a great way of doing it. Three to four days of fasting, a couple of times a,、uh, a year. So, in summary, how can you trigger autophagy? Fasting, intermittent fasting, fasting more than 16 hours. 18 to 20 hours or so is likely to start triggering some of the autophagy in your body on a daily basis. Again, there are no human studies that I know of right now that show you that they actually trigger it everywhere. But there's a lot of indications that this may actually be happening, and that you need more than 16 hours. Other ways of triggering your autophagy: you can add some curcumin, you can add some resveratrol,、um, eat、uh, natto, <laughs> maybe durian, and、uh, exercise. And、uh, also, depending on where you live, expose your body to heat, like saunas. Or、um, or and、uh, cold shocks. So with those types of practices, you should be、um, renewing and detoxing your body in a beautiful way. But keep in mind that if you're shortening your feeding window. You need to check if you're getting all the nutrients in the long run. Hope you enjoyed this. See you in the next video.